this is Teresa Palkovic from Valley Rehab Center. I'm a physical therapist and I'm here to talk to you today about shoulder pain and rotator cuff injuries. There are lots of reasons why we can have shoulder pain. One reason is called impingement syndrome. The second is rotator cuff, actual rotator cuff injury. And third is a cervical radiculopathy or um, a neck issue that is causing pain into your shoulder or down your arm that is very similar to uh, a rotator cuff injury or an impingement syndrome. Yeah. This is just a little bit of anatomy of the shoulder so that you can understand how um, an impingement syndrome works. This is your shoulder. This is looking straight forward, so it's like you're looking at me. This is your humerus or the arm, your arm, the scapula or your shoulder blade, the clavicle here, which is your collarbone. The shoulder is actually a free floating joint. It's only held to your rib cage or to your trunk by muscles. So it's very important that when we're treating a shoulder that we look at the whole shoulder girdle. Not just what's happening at the shoulder joint, but everything that's happening in the upper back and neck area as well. Because all of those muscles attach to these bones and they affect the motion of the shoulder. Impingement syndrome occurs when you get pressure on the rotator cuff when the humerus or your arm bone hits this clavicle or the AC joint. The rotator cuff muscles lie between these two bones and when you raise your arm if there's poor alignment in either direction when you're raising your arm, then you're going to get a pinching or a painful sensation here. Sometimes with people who do repetitive work like carpenters, uh, roof bolters in the mines, um, anyone who does a lot of electricians, a lot of overhead work, um, those people develop bone spurs right here at this AC joint or chromioclavicular joint and then that puts pressure on the rotator cuff muscle and causes pain. Now that can eventually lead to a rotator cuff tear. So impingement syndrome can lead to a tear in the rotator cuff. Usually with impingement syndrome, you're getting pain, weakness, and loss of motion at your shoulder. So causes of impingement syndrome could be bone spurs, a bicep tendinopathy. A lot of people come to us and say, well, I was just doing um, yard work, uh, raking my leaves or doing a lot of work, and they were using their biceps a lot. And what happens is, is the biceps muscle actually right here sends a tendon that comes up and, a, and attaches in the front of the shoulder, and it also has another um, head that comes along and attaches right at that acromion process as well, of that AC joint. And that, if that area get swollen and inflamed from overuse, then you have a tendinopathy of the biceps muscle and that will give you shoulder pain that sometimes is misinterpreted as a rotator cuff problem. You could actually have a tear of the rotator cuff. You could have just some shoulder instability. What this means is that you don't have good upper back muscles. So the upper back muscles actually hold your shoulder blade down against your rib cage. And so if you think about it as two movable parts, this is my shoulder blade, this is my arm, when the muscle contracts to try and um, raise your arm, what happens is if the muscles aren't holding this bone down, now you've got two bones moving together, hitting one another, versus what should happen is the scapula, if your upper back muscles are strong, your scapula stays down or your shoulder blade stays down against the rib cage, and as you raise the arm, the arm comes up. Scapular dysfunction, which we're going to talk about again, and then a labral injury. The labrum is actually the cartilage right here um, in the socket, and sometimes that can become torn. That's usually caused by a traumatic injury. So impingement syndrome, what happens with that is the pain develops over time. It's usually in the front or the side of the arm. And um, the pain ha occurs most often between 70 and 130. 20 to 130 degrees. So that's called a painful arc of motion. S impingement syndrome can be caused because you have bone spurs or um, a AC joint that maybe is too tight or too mobile. Um, that would be a primary um, 
external impingement that's caused by something other than um, a muscular issue or instability issue. The secondary impingement is um, caused because of the poor shoulder blade stability um, and a weak what we call what was known as the serratus anterior muscle. The serratus anterior muscle actually lies between your shoulder blade and your rib cage and it holds that shoulder blade down against your ribs and it keeps you from um, it keeps that scapula or shoulder blade from tipping forward and crunching into the humerus when it raises. Um, one way to determine if someone has um, a secondary external impingement, and this is a self-test that you can do at home. If you um, stand up, first of all, if you stand and you raise your arms up to about this level, have someone look at your back. If you notice that your shoulder blades kind of stick out, or wing out away from your rib cage, then you have a weak serratus anterior because that muscle should keep that rib, that shoulder blade down against those ribs. So when you raise your arm, you should be able to come through a full arc of motion with those um, shoulder blades just sliding out on the rib cage and sliding back in. However, if you have weakness, you're going to see those tip out. Also, you're going to have less range of motion in standing, so you might get to about here, but then you start to feel the impingement. However, if you lay down on your back, flat on your back, and you raise your arms, you can get your arms all the way overhead. That's because now your body weight is keeping your shoulder blade against your rib cage, and so now the muscle can take you, the muscles of your shoulders can take you through the full range without that scapula hitting against the humerus and causing that impingement. Bicep tendinopathy or an inflammation of the biceps ten, um, tendon um, occurs when you've overworked that biceps muscle. A lot of times people will come in and they'll complain of pain like in here right in their biceps muscle. And so we have to do a lot of work to loosen that up because all of that tissue is inflamed and it can mimic, again, a, a rotator cuff problem or cause you to have shoulder pain. Now, sometimes what happens with a rotator cuff tear is you might also get a biceps tendon tear. Sometimes a biceps tendon can tear by itself. So if you have a sudden onset of pain in your biceps and you feel a snap or a pop, it's possible that you've ruptured your biceps tendon. If that occurs, you're going to know because usually you're going to have bruising over that area because there's going to be some internal hemorrhage from that um, tendon snapping and breaking. And then what you're going to see is a Popeye muscle. So all of a sudden it looks like your biceps muscle is kind of way down here like Popeye. Okay, the rotator cuff. The rotator cuff is made up of four muscles. This is a picture. You have your supraspinatus, which runs right along here, your infraspinatus, which is right on the back side of the shoulder blade, and now this is looking at my shoulder from here. So you're looking through my rib cage. So the subscapularis is actually on the in, inner side of my shoulder blade. And then the um, teres muscles are actually here. They make the outside of your axilla. Those are the muscles of the rotator cuff. Now the muscle that most often gets torn is the supraspinatus because it runs right through this area. Um, usually, but not always, um, people will report pain like kind of radiating up into their neck a little bit or into their shoulder area. But if you have a rotator cuff tear, a true tear, you are going to have difficulty raising your arm. So you're going to see a dull ache deep in the shoulder. Most people with a rotator cuff tear will say they can't sleep on that side. That's one of the symptoms. Um, they have difficulty either combing their hair or reaching behind their back, like to wash or to get in their back pocket to get their wallet. They could have some weakness in their arm. You might or may not. Um, and it usually occurs from overhead use of the arm. Now, if you have a complete tear of the rotator cuff, you're not going to be able to raise your arm. So anyone who has a complete tear of the rotator cuff or even a partial tear, what you're going to see is, is they're going to kind of hike their shoulder up like this to try and raise it, but they're not going to be able to get through the full range. In some cases, if it's only a partial tear, they'll be able to take their arm up close to them and raise it here because they're using a different muscle. But to actually raise it out to the side, they can't do that, and you'll see this kind of pattern. 
So if you are having shoulder pain and you can't raise your arm any further than this and you're hiking your shoulder towards your ear, then more than likely you have a rotator cuff tear. So symptoms would be pain at rest, pain when you're laying on that shoulder. Now the degree of pain does not correlate with the degree of the tear. So some people may have a small tear, which small tears can be rehabilitated. Complete tears need to have surgery. Um, weakness. Again, with weakness though, a large tear you'll have significant weakness, but if you have a small tear, you might have full range of your shoulder. It's just very painful. And then loss of motion. The degree of uh, loss of motion does not necessarily again uh, occur uh, with the degree of the tear unless it's a complete tear. Risk factors, of course, are your age, certain jobs, certain sports, and family history. Um, usually, rotator cuff injuries or rotator cuff tears occur after the age of 40. Um, more often we see them in either, if they're a younger population, they're usually baseball pitchers, archers, tennis players. Um, Drew Brees had a rotator cuff injury um, as a football, as a quarterback. So those type of sports you'll see rotator cuff injuries. Um, construction jobs where you have repetitive overhead activity, electricians, roof boulders, those type of professions. And then a family history. A lot of this has to do with just the genetic, the makeup, how large your, your uh, scapula is and, and the just the, your overall bony structure. People who have wider shoulders tend to, to have more um, problems with a rotator cuff problem. Um, they, their AC joints tend to be a little bit larger and so then there's not as much room um, for that rotator cuff between the two bones. So if you've got a larger body structure that also can affect you. Scapula dysfunction. This is abnormal movement of your shoulder your shoulder blade. Um, we talked a little bit already about the fact that that shoulder blade has to stay down against your rib cage. When you raise your arms up, that shoulder blade nice and smoothly rotates up and then it rotates back. Now, if you have weakness, it's going to tip forward. So when you try to rotate up, you're going to be limited in your motion. Sometimes, again, if that serratus anterior is not holding that scapula against your rib cage, then it's going to wing out and again, you're going to have a less motion because the scapula can't gently glide out and glide in like it's supposed to. These are your scapular stable muscles, stabilizer muscles and as you can see, there are a lot of muscles there. And this is really the first place that as a physical therapist I focus on because most shoulder problems come from poor posture. And in this day and age when we're on our phones all the time or we're using computers and using a mouse all the time and we're always typing, our cervical posture, our neck posture is terrible. And so we're seeing a lot of what we call text neck where people's kind of, kind of coming forward like this. And even this, if I demonstrate here, if you're looking at me, if I put my arm, my, my postures like this and I go to raise my arms, this is really as far as I can go. However, if I bring my shoulders back and down and bring my chin back, then I can raise my arms up overhead. So posture is key. So this, pa this part of the, the um, therapy is really important and that is to, function, to, to, fo to focus on your posture. A slap tear usually occurs from some kind of traumatic injury and that is where you get actually a tear of your rotator cuff. You get a labral injury which is damage to the cartilage and you get sometimes a biceps rupture as well because all those structures really kind of intermingle right here and in that case then you will have, you could have a possible tear of all three. Um, usually they occur with falls, car accidents because you hit the steering wheel when you braced yourself, heavy lifting, those are all common uh, causes and a slap tear usually has to have surgery. Sometimes when people have a slap tear what they'll complain of is they have difficulty, they feel like they have a block when they go to reach across their arm or they go to reach up they feel like something's there but if they kind of move away from it and around it they can get around it and that's because they have that little piece of cartilage that's torn off and it's blocking their motion. Now cervical radiculopathy, 
A cervical radiculopathy means that you have some kind of arthritic or um, degenerative change or something going on in your neck that is causing you to have symptoms down your arm. In the cervical spine, we have, five, we have um, seven cervical nerves that go down and actually eight cervical nerves that go down into your arm. So they come off at different levels in your neck and travel down your arm. A lot of times people will come to me and they'll say they have a rotator cuff problem, which they are having shoulder pain, but then they report numbness and tingling down their arm, they report loss of um, strength, maybe in their biceps or loss of strength in their hand. And so in those cases, it's really, the, they may have a shoulder problem and they may have weakness in their rotator cuff, but it's not because they have a rotator cuff tear, it's because they have something going on in their neck that's then impinging on the nerves that innervate those muscles and so now the muscles are weak and because they're weak they're having the pain. So when we look here if you have a nerve root impingement at C5-6 or C6-7 from arthritis or spinal stenosis or an alignment problem that can mimic a rotator cuff or impingement syndrome. So Signs of a cervical radiculopathy would be if you're having shoulder pain, okay, in the neck, or shoulder that pain that radiates down your arm, or a lot of people will complain of pain radiating right along their shoulder blade, right here, or sometimes they'll complain of a feeling of a knot up under their shoulder blade. All of those are symptoms of a radiculopathy. They might have numbness or tingling in their arm or hand. They might have weakness in the shoulder, elbow, or hand. They'll have decreased reflexes. They will have loss of sensation, okay, and they have pain that develops or radiates into the shoulder, along the shoulder blade, and sometimes the pain can be made worse by either looking up or looking down. In that case, that means there's a alignment issue in their neck that's causing impingement on the nerve and then radiating that pain down. So I hope this helps to give you some ideas of why you might be having shoulder pain. And in other videos, we'll be talking about what you can do if you have any one of these conditions. As in all things, you should all certainly consult a physician um, or a clinician, a physical therapist, before starting any exercise regimen or any kind of treatment. Um, these are simply recommendations that we'll be making to you, um, and then we hope that we'll, you'll find them beneficial.